and together we say, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I am about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, eternal seed of the word of God. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same again. Never, never, never. I will never be the same again in Jesus' name. And while he's standing, please open with me to Matthew chapter 7. And together I will read from verse 24 to 27. Matthew chapter 7. And together we read from verse 24 to 27. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. Verse 27. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall thereof. I pray that we shall not be foolish in Jesus' name. And that our house and our lives shall never fall in the mighty name of Jesus. This morning we'll go into part four of the series, My Sure Foundation. To take us into the sermon, we'll take this song, Touch Me With Your Hands, Jesus. Don't let me go the same way that I came. Touch me with your hands. that song to a prayer. Say, Father, please touch me with your hands. Don't let me go the same way that I came. 
Go ahead and talk to God. Say, Father, I have come into your presence this morning. Touch me with your hands, Daddy. Don't let me go the same way that I came. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Please hold your neighbor and pray that same prayer for your neighbor. Say, Father, please touch my sister. Touch my brother. Don't let him go the same way he came. Just go ahead and pray for that person next to you. Please touch my brother. Touch my sister. Don't let her go the same way that she came. And don't let him go the same way that he came. Let his joy be full. Let our joy be full. Send a word. A word that will settle the matter in her heart and settle the matter in his heart. That joy and strength and hope will be fully restored. Thank you, Daddy. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. God bless you. You can take your seat. And please avoid any kind of distractions. Please avoid any kind of distractions. As much as you can write, please write whatever you hear the Spirit says. Like I've always reminded you, what you hear may be different from what your neighbor hears. So hear for yourself. And what you hear may be more than what the pastor is saying. The pastor may say one point, you may hear ten. Hear God for yourself. In part one to three of this series, God revealed to us that one, the foundation of your life is responsible for where you are today. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. Two, that the foundation of your life will determine how high you will go in life. Acts 13, verse 22. And then number three, the foundation of your life will determine how big your impact will be. Genesis 22, verse 12, and verse 16 to 18. Inside each of these points are several messages that God revealed unto us. It's my prayer that each of those messages, inside each of these messages, God Almighty will continue to keep in your hearts in the mighty name of Jesus. Part four. The Lord is saying to somebody here this morning that the foundation of your life will determine how strong you are in the day of trouble. The foundation of your life will determine how strong you are in the day of trouble. I pray for somebody here this morning. In your day of trouble, I pray that your foundation will stand strong in Jesus' name. Amen. What does day of trouble mean? What it means to you may be different from what it means to the person sitting next to you. So 10 examples, 10 examples of the day of trouble. And I'm sure you will find your own there. Number one, when things are not going the way you want. That's a day of trouble. 
things are not going the way that you want. Number two, example number two, when your prayers are not being answered, you have been praying and praying and praying and fasting, but nothing is happening. That's a day of trouble. Example number three. When there is sorrow rather than joy, you wish that you are happy, that joy is in your life. But rather than experiencing joy, you are experiencing sorrow. That is a day of trouble. Number four, when there is fear rather than faith, that is a day of trouble. When you find yourself that you are afraid, you are not even sure what your future holds. You are not sure what will happen to you. Fear has replaced faith. That is a day of trouble. Number five, when there is pain rather than pleasure, that is a day of trouble. There is pain in your life rather than pleasure. It's a day of trouble. Number six, when there is lack rather than surplus, Things are not enough. The things you want to do, you cannot do because you don't have the resources. You wish to send your children to good school, but you cannot pay for the school. For the school. You see food that you want to eat, but you can't eat it because you can't afford it. It's a day of trouble. Example number seven. When there is defeat rather than victory, you find yourself you are losing the battle of life. You are losing the battle of life. Whether it's in your office, it's in your marriage, it's concerning your children, but you are experiencing defeat instead of experiencing victory. That is a day of trouble. Number eight, when there is confusion rather than celebration, <clears throat> you are confused. You don't even know what to believe. You don't even know what to do anymore. Rather than celebrating, you are confused. That is a day of trouble. And number nine, example nine, when there is quarrel rather than peace, that's a day of trouble. When you find yourself, you are quarreling. You are quarreling rather than dwelling in peace, which is what God asks that we all do. That's a day of trouble. Quarrel is not of the Lord. And number 10, when there is sickness rather than health, it's a day of trouble. Those are just examples of days of trouble. Well, I don't know what the day of your own trouble is, but my prayer for you is that God will see you through in the mighty name of Jesus. I say it one more time. My prayer for you is that you will overcome that day of trouble in the mighty name of Jesus. Proverbs 24, verse 10. Proverbs 24, verse 10. He says something very important. Proverbs 24, verse 10. If thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. In other words, if you 
faint in the day of trouble your foundation is weak that the day of trouble will come is guaranteed that day will come but what the Lord is saying to you this morning if you faint or fail in that day thy strength is small thy foundation is weak because you only know how strong a man is you only know how strong a woman is in the day of trouble. Is somebody still with me? When everything is going well, you can say all you want. That's not you. The real you is how you behave in the day of trouble. That's why I want to pray for somebody here one more time. You know that you are going through a day of trouble. Just rise on your feet. I just want to say a word of prayer into your life. I don't know what nature of the trouble is. But you are the reason we are here today. I pray for you from the bottom of my heart. That in this day of trouble. God Almighty will give you strength. You will not fail. Amen. You will not fall. Amen. The enemy will not rejoice over you. Amen. After this day of trouble, you will sing a new song. Amen. And the devil will be put to shame. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. You can sit down. Matthew seven twenty four to... 27 that we read is a passage we've been reading now for the last four weeks. Matthew 7, 24 to 27. I want to just remind you of seven things inside it and then we pray. Seven things that you can see. There are more, but I'm just bringing out seven. From Matthew 7, verse 24 to 27. Number one. Hear, write, and remember the word of God. Hear, write, and remember the word of God. You see, in the day of trouble, one of the things that will help you is how much of his word you remember. In that day of trouble, what we see you true is how much of his word that you remember. That's why verse 24 of that passage says, Whosoever hear these words of mine. How many of you are hearing this sermon this morning? How many of you are taking notes? How many of you will remember? That will be the evidence whether you'll be able to stand this season of your life. Because Hebrews chapter 10 verse 17 tells us, Hebrews 10 17 says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So you must always learn to hear, to write, and to, to remember. Number two, do the word of God. Do the word of God. It's one thing to hear. It's a different matter to do. When I ask a question, how many of you are hearing? Every hand went up. Every hand went up. 
But if I ask how many of you are doing, I can assure you less than half of the hands will truly go up. Because doing is more important than hearing. If you hear and you don't do, it has not done you any good. I pray for somebody here that the grace to perform his word may God give unto you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let me give you an example, a testimony. Many, many years ago, I think in year 2000 now, that's about 17 years ago. How many years ago? 17 years ago, I was uh, a brother in the church. I believe I don't. I wasn't even ordained. I was just a brother in the church. Then my pastor called me and said, "Brother Shagun, can you go and settle a quarrel that is happening in that family? The husband and the wife were quarrelling, and I think the husband was even a deacon." So I got there with my Bible, brother, sister, uh, can we look at the word of God? Do you know what the response of the husband is? Leave that matter for now. Leave the word of God for now. In other words, this matter, word of God cannot solve it. Put that matter for now. Even a deacon. If the word of God cannot solve it, then there can be no solution. Do you understand? Any problem you have in your life, if you cannot find the word, the solution here, you will never find it. That's why knowing and doing it is the solution to your day of trouble. So you are going to rise one more time and talk to God. For that the grace to perform that which I hear. Please release unto me in Jesus' name. The grace to perform that which I hear. Father, please release unto me. Just go ahead and talk to the Lord. The grace to perform that which I hear. Please release unto me. Don't let your word be lost in my life. Don't let your word be lost in my life. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. God bless you. You can take your seat. Number three. Today is a gentle sermon. But I'm praying that you will take notes. Number three, be wise. Be wise. Because foolishness is dangerous. That verse 24 describes what wisdom is. Some of you may think wisdom is going to school. Some of you may think wisdom is being in a high position. Some of you may think wisdom is possessing many things. But the passage we've been reading for the past four weeks says wisdom is when you hear and you do. Whosoever heareth these words of mine and doeth them shall be likened unto a wise man. So number three, learn to be wise. Learn to be wise. Number four, the rainy day will surely come. The rainy day will surely come. You know that verse 25 says, and the rain descended. And the rain descended. One of the things the Holy Spirit explained to me is that the rainy day means the day of restriction. You cannot do the things you wish you, you, you could do. 
You know, when the rain starts to fall now, there are many things you could have done if there was no rain. But as soon as the rain begins to fall, many of you will stay in your houses. The place that normally would take you 30 minutes will take you two hours. What the Holy Spirit is saying is that that rainy day is coming in your life when you will not be able to do the things that you wish to do. The rainy day is coming. Number five, the floods are coming. The floods are coming. The floods are coming. And the Holy Spirit explained the flood to mean danger, sorrow. That's why we're talking about my sure foundation. Because when your foundation is solid, it doesn't matter whether the rains are coming, whether the floods are coming, you will stand firm. So the floods are coming. And those floods mean danger, sorrow. But I pray for you one more time. In the day of the floods, your foundation shall stand secure. Yeah. Number six, the winds are coming. The winds are coming. And the winds is really also about dislocation. When the wind blows, what happens? Things are scattered. Things are scattered when the wind blows. So when that verse 26 is saying, and the wind blew, I mean, things are going to go where you don't want them to go. Things are going to be scattered. So prepare for the winds. And then number seven is a question. Number seven is a question. Will your house stand? Will your house stand? Let's just rise on our feet. Let's rise on our feet. Matthew seven twenty seven. Matthew seven twenty seven. It ends with a statement that that foolish man who had the word of God and refused to do them. The rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell and great was the fall thereof. Talk to God and say, Father, please don't let my house fail. Don't let my house fall. Don't let my life fail fail in the day of trouble. Go ahead and talk to the Lord. In the day of trouble, Father, don't let me fail. Don't let me fall. I need your strength. I need your grace to see me through, Lord. When the rains descend, when the floods come and when the winds blow, Father, I need you by my side. I need you by my side to keep me strong. I need you by my side to keep my foundation sure. Father, please don't let me fall. Don't let me fail. Go to the foundation of my life and make it strong, Lord. Go to the foundation of my life. In the day of trouble, in the day of struggle, in the day of lack, in the day of quarrel, in the day of sickness, in the day of confusion, Father, please let my foundation stand secure. 
in the day when my prayers are not being answered, in the day when things are not going the way I want, Father, let my faith be strong yet still. When things are not going my way, Father, let my faith remain strong in you. In the day when there is no peace, in the day when there is pain in my life, let my foundation remain strong, Lord, in you. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. One of the things that can help you in those days is if you have the rock of ages. That's why he's called the rock of ages. That's why they call him the rock of ages. That in those days, if you stand on the rock, it won't fall. You won't fall. So you are here this morning. You just want to surrender your life to the rock of ages. So that they can see you true in the day of the flood and in the day of the wind. As they take the song, see me true, Lord Jesus, see me true. I want you to just come forward, I want to pray for you. You're saying, Pastor, pray with me, I want to surrender my life to the rock of ages. The rest of us can sit down. Say, please, Pastor, pray for me, pray with me. Let me see that hand up. Just lift up that hand wherever you are. Just lift it up. God bless you. Lift it up very 